Welcome to The Business Strategist, the show that gives business owners and entrepreneurs game-changing business strategies that can be used in scaling and transforming a business. Sharing deep dive conversations with industry experts, thought leaders and clients facing real challenges and uphill struggles. Brought to you by business strategist, former elite athlete, international speaker and best-selling author, Adam Strong. Over the past 12 to 24 months, we've been generating thousands upon leads that's generated over six figures worth of business for our own business as well as our client's business using a very simple framework. And today, what I would like you to do is I'd like to talk you through how we generate lots of leads on LinkedIn using outbound strategy, which could then turn into high converting sales. So today I want to walk you through exactly that five-step framework that we use in our own business that you can also put into your own business and also improve your outbound lead generation strategy. Hi guys, my name is Adam Strong. Welcome to this week's business strategy, strategist, and really looking forward to today. Me and my team have been, I suppose, experimenting, I want to call it that, and I want to go, kind of share with you a framework about how to generate more leads and more sales using LinkedIn. So first of all, I want to kind of go through some of the common mistakes that a lot of people make when it comes to outbound messaging on LinkedIn. Uh, Common mistake number one is that a lot of people, especially when they reach out to me, and maybe you have experienced this as well, is that most people, when they're doing outbound strategy on LinkedIn, is they do ex- exceptionally bad. And what do I mean by that is, first of all, is they skip the rapport building, right? And they just go straight in and ask too quickly. So they try to push uh, their own products, their own services, without really understanding my needs, my wants, and my dreams and desires. So that's common mistake number one, is that they skip the rapport building. You've got to learn how to get to know someone before you make an offer, okay? Because it just doesn't make any sense. Okay. Number two, common mistake number two is they ask too soon. So I don't know if you've ever been in a situation, I've, I have hundreds upon messages of outbound messaging from other people that have gone in and assumed my situation or they assume that I am looking for what they are offering, but they ask too soon without asking simple questions. So that's common mistake number two. Common mistake number three is they don't ask questions, right? So I don't know if you've ever been into a situation where, you know, you've got an outbound message from a stranger or from someone that you don't really know, and they don't ask relative questions. They don't ask open-ended questions. You've got to ask open-ended questions in order to create trust and understanding. Mistake number four is jump into conclusions, right? I use this analogy a lot. If you jump to conclusions and you automatically assume that I'm looking for what you're offering or whatever it is, is that people hate being sold to, but everyone is willing to buy. You've probably heard of that analogy before, but there is a process about going about doing it. And the last mistake that I would say is they push their own agenda on other people. And what I mean by that is that they try to push, they push their own agenda. They try to think about themselves rather than the thinking about the prospect. So that is generally what the common mistakes are associated with when it comes to LinkedIn outbound messaging. Now, what I'd love to do with you guys is I'd love to walk you through the five-step framework that we use in our own business that has helped generate thousands of leads over the last 12 to 24 months, which has led to over six figures worth of business in our business and also in our client's business. So step number one is positioning. Positioning is crucial when it comes to LinkedIn, okay? What do I mean by positioning? So when we look at your LinkedIn profile, I look at a number of key things. So first of all, has it got a compelling headline? So does it does it show me exactly how you can help me rather than t- talking to me about your features, such as you're a management consultant or you're an accountant? I didn't ask what you do. I want to know what's the benefits of 
working with you, okay? So educational-based marketing, what's in the headline? I help X accountants, management consultants, whoever it is that you help, okay? And what's the problem that you're trying to solve? Okay? You're trying to solve less stress. You're trying to solve uh, less pain, whatever it might be, whatever it is. And what's the time frame that you can do it in? What's the time frame that you are, that you can uh, potentially do it in? So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a good, strong headline. I'm looking for a call to action in multiple different parts of your LinkedIn. Use your LinkedIn channel or your LinkedIn page specifically as a little bit of a sales page, but in a way that it speaks to people. Okay? Uh, the other part of a really good optimized LinkedIn uh, profile is looking at your brand story. So what do I mean by that is basically, you know, why you started, what is your legacy, what's important to you, what are your visions, uh, what are your values? Um, if you're really stuck in terms of brand story, you're welcome to head over to my LinkedIn profile and you can get an idea what we mean by different types of of uh, different types of brand stories and how you can connect your message, your story to your audience. So that's what the key is, is the connection. And making sure you have a really good uh, professional profile picture, which is so crucially important, and a brand background image that tells us what specifically you do. And again, last tip when it comes to positioning is what do you have in your featured in section? Most people use mobile phone when it comes to accessing people's LinkedIn profiles. So I would recommend only having three different parts in the featured in section. So for example, if you have a LinkedIn newsletter or you have a lead magnet or you have something on offer that can help educate and inspire your audience, then put it in the featured in section. All right. Don't give too much information away. Create curiosity, which is going to be important. So that's step number one is about positioning, positioning yourself as the go to person, as the go to authority in your industry. Step number two, as part of outbound messaging. Now, if we set the scene here, one of the things that you can do when it comes to outbound messaging, when you're connecting with people, your ideal clients. So whoever are the ideal clients that you're working with, whoever it is that you are, whoever is your ideal clients, whether it be financial advisors, whether you're in the B2B space or you're in the B2C space, okay, depending on who you are connecting with. But say, for example, you were connecting with your ideal audience, say they were accountants as an example, and you were you were connecting with, say, I don't know, 10 accountants that you just randomly wanted to connect with just to build some report. And this is the key part, okay? Step number two as part of the framework is building some rapport. So once you've reached out to that individual, build some rapport with them, acknowledge them, tell them that about the fact that you're excited about connecting with them, about the fact that you appreciate them. Because in the world of entrepreneurship and the world of business, we don't get enough acknowledgements and compliments. This is a great way to reduce people's uh, barriers to entry because imagine the amount of LinkedIn messages that we're all getting. And one of the first things that I'm super skeptical, especially being European, of course, is, oh, what's this person going to sell me? The idea is to build some rapport between you and the other individual. Rapport building, and it shouldn't take too long. Don't waste people's time. Don't waste their time. Don't waste your time. But you know, rapport building, okay, really, really important. Find out how their day is. Find out their, maybe you might want to ask them a, an opinion. Like maybe mention the fact that you, the reason why you connected, what was the, what was it that piqued their curiosity or your curiosity into their profile? Is it the fact that you have a mutual friend connected? So have some rapport going on and your LinkedIn messaging. Step number three, ask intelligent questions, all right? Now, one of the things that we do when it comes to um, asking questions is you want to find out a little bit about their present situation. Find out a little bit a bit more. <clears throat> when we say present situation, just find out why they started what they're doing and just find out where they're at in terms of their journey. Find out what their present situation is. Uh, step number two as part of that is find out what's their dream. What's their ultimate dream? What's their objective? What's their goals? Find out a little bit more about what they actually want to achieve, why they actually are in business in the first place. So important. And as part of this, asking questions as well is what is it that what's the challenges that they're kind of, you know, heading into? So say, for example, they, they're A and they're trying to get to B and B is their dream and desire or the transformation. OK, what are the challenges that they're facing? What have they tried? What have they not tried? So what you're trying to do is you're trying to diagnose 
And what you're trying to do is you're offering, what you're going to do is you're going to offer insight. And that's going to be part of the next step. You're going to a nutritionist and you go to a nutritionist because you're trying to lose weight. And the nutritionist asks you, so tell us what sort of diets have you tried in the past? What's worked, what hasn't worked? Imagine being in that situation, right? It's exactly the same thing. Using outbound messaging, simple, really simple questions, short, sharp, and sweet, and straight to the point. Step number four, offer offer insight and recommendation. If they're open, if they're if they're not in too much of a rush, ask permission first. Hey, have you got two minutes? I'd love to offer some insights and recommendations. And it might mean it might mean that you are offering a recommendation. For example, you may have a resource that you can provide for them. It might be that you've done a podcast episode. It might mean that you've created a guide or something that's going to help them to uh, get them closer to their goal. So look at it from a top-down perspective. What recommendations, what insights can you offer as part of that? And once that once you've offered that, ask them, would they be open to having a call with you? So a one-to-one call and just to find out if there's any synergy, any collaboration, find out if you can offer some extra insight or you may have some extra ideas and it's too long to go through LinkedIn messaging, but you'd love to share some insights on a 30 minute call with them and just to go through what you're thinking, what framework. And again, you can then take that sales conversation into something which is a little bit more substance. So let's just, again, let's just go through that five step framework again. So the first one is positioning, making sure that your LinkedIn profile is positioned correctly. And what do I mean by that is that it's optimized. It's got a great headline. You're looking at a profile picture and a banner and also a brand story about why you do what you do and where that connection is going to come in. So you've got to make sure that there is enough call to actions on there and there's recommendations. So there's social proof. So you're utilizing LinkedIn and you're updating it on a regular basis. Number two is rapport building using LinkedIn outbound messaging. So acknowledging them, complimenting them, and uh, appreciating them for their friendship. Appreciation goes so far away. When people subscribe to my newsletter, for example, one of the first things I love to do is I love to reach out to them. They may not be connected with me, but I'd love to reach out to them and just say, I just want to say thank you so much and appreciate you becoming a subscriber to the Business Strategist newsletter let me know how I can be of further assistance to you, okay? So again, what you're doing is you're not selling anything. You're trying to just build some rapport with them. You're trying to create some conversation with it, you. And they may connect with you on an individual level as well. Number three is ask smart questions. Ask questions, and it's a bit like do- diagnose. Uh, you're trying to diagnose what they're, what they're trying to achieve, so what their dream and, and desires are, what's uh, what they have tried in the past, What's worked, what's not worked. Offer, um, uh, <clears throat> ask if they will be open to uh, insights and recommendations, which is step number four. And once you've uh, offered some recommendations and some insights, uh, ask if they'll be interested in a one to one call. And you could say to them, you could give them a couple of options over on LinkedIn, or you could ask them, would they be open to, you could then send them a link to your calendar and then they can choose a time that is com- uh, convenient to them. And that works for you. So you've got it all streamlined and stuff like that. That's what we tend to do. So guys, I hope this has helped really refine and improve your LinkedIn outbound sales strategy for increasing leads and increase in sales. Now we've been using this for the best part of 12 to 24 months. And it is it was a little bit slow at the beginning. However, Things are really, really, really picked up. Just refining what we say and how we communicate, but also not coming across salesy, not coming across pushy. You're intrigued. You want to find out more about the individual, but from a sincere and authentic perspective. So listen, guys, hope you've enjoyed today. Let me know if you are following any type of LinkedIn outbound strategy. Maybe there is a step that you would like to add to the current five-step framework. I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, thank you so much for listening into today's episode of The Business Strategist. Hopefully, we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Business Strategist with Adam Strong. Follow Adam on LinkedIn, YouTube, and adamstrong.net. 
Leave a review on Apple or Spotify.